Welcome everybody! The DreamHack Valencia qualifier just started. We already had a few DreamHacks and so far it was especially Team Liquid who was able to dominate them. Now another DreamHack is going to come up soon, DreamHack Valencia, and we have a qualifier tournament here. And today we're going into a best of three series in that qualifier, Nihilum facing Rocket. And the first map is Tomb of the Spider Queen. And what Rocket, the former well met team, is trying to do here is again a strategy that they have played a lot actually on this map. They went for the double promote with Brightwing and with Tacita. On the other side we are then having Nihilum and Nihilum was going into Muradin. They had a Nuburag, a very very heavy front line here. They also had a Tyranda for the roaming squad between Muradin and Tyranda for the snipes. Very very strong of course not only on this map but on any map but uh, if you have only short distances between the lanes that roaming squad of course picks up a lot of danger. Like you, you are really really dangerous. It's so difficult to deal with that if just at any point in the game suddenly a Muradin and Tyranda can appear right next to you and start putting you into that stun lock and apply the damage. What Rocket on the other hand is going to try and do here is also run in Arthurs and the reason for that is that we had a lot of tanks already picked by Nihilum and then also a few banned out by them. So they put a lot of pressure onto the front line of, of Rocket and Rocket was replying with an Arthurs that they're trying to run here now into the Spider Queen. So guys first game coming up best of three series here at the Dreamhack Valencia qualifier between Rocket and Nihilum. All right, boys, DreamHack Valencia qualifier. We are in the round of 16, and we have a best of three series with map number one being Tomb of the Spider Queen. We have a pretty cool setup here with teams. We have Nihilum going up against Rocket, and currently to the left side of the map, it is Nihilum with Rolik on Taranda. We have Taz Dingo on Sylvanas Bakery. Playing for Nihilum today is on Malfurion after one till left the team. Alex the Pro, Gio on Anubarak and Stork on Muradin with a double tank lineup up against Rocket who started with the right side of the map with Sport Billy on Brightwing, Shadowmar on Tassadar, Sovold on Vala, Hazobs on Jaina and Zocke on Arthur. So, yeah, uh, cool setup here for the two teams. A double promote on the side of Rocket. We are having the double warrior lineup for their opponents with, of course, Muradin and Tyranda going straight for that roaming squad at the beginning of the game. But right now, Muradin is actually getting a lot of damage dished out. Yeah, he definitely ate a lot of that. That was actually, in this case, like, kind of fun there. So, it's like this... This, it's a little bit of a love triangle that we have there. I'm always told that in the World of Warcraft lore, like Tyranda and Malfurion have a thing. I can't believe that because like Tyranda is not looking too bad for her age. If you look at Malfurion on the other hand, like this guy is just old. And well, Tyranda these days is seen a lot with Muradin. So apparently she has the hots for those shorter dwarfs and maybe the beard, I don't know. But like, yeah, they are again. Actually, all three of them, it's the triangle, I told you. They're going straight for Sport Billy. Ah, oh, but Brightwing gets away. We have these four-man rotations between mid and top lane again that ne uh, that Rocket already showcased. It's actually getting very popular on Tomb of the Spider Queen these days. Bot lane is where we have Anubarak going up against Tacita. And just keep in mind that this is definitely going to be a double promote on the side of uh, Rocket again. At least that's what we suppose it's going to be just because they used it already in this qualifier in the earlier rounds. And they went straight for the Tacita Brightwing. And it's also one of those maps where it's just like extremely popular. Again, the attempt to take one of the targets down. A good lockdown, by the way. Getting that root in from Bakery after Rolik and Stork started with their stuns. It's super important and it works so far quite well. Not good enough to get the kill though. And uh, well, we're having, of course, the Rangers mark taken. Also, keep in mind that it is the scouting drone on level 1 here. It is one of those maps where early game control, and especially you controlling those two turn-in spots, can really guarantee you a lead in the game. Not really a victory, but at least a lead, since you are able to control those two turn-in points and therefore the objectives of the map. We have, in terms of talents, for Arthurs, who is the solo tank for his team, uh, Block Chosen, and Arthurs is getting a bit more popular. If you want to go for some kind of dive comp, he's not really your first choice, just because he doesn't have that gap closer that other heroes like Tyriel and Nuburak have, but he definitely is very good when you are afraid that your opponent's team might try to jump into your backline, since he can really slow that onslaught down with his Frozen Tempest and also the Howling Blast. So he's getting a bit more popular these days, and it's actually kind of nice to see him back in action. Uh, you can't get enough of the Lich King, I want to 
say. We're having also right now level 4s dropping, and there's one promote, and we're definitely going to see the second one, aren't we? I mean, Tassel hasn't picked his talent just yet, but there it is, double promote taken. And as you can see, Barb shot on Sylvanas on level 1, and I personally love this talent a lot. I love it to death on this map in particular, just because the web weavers can be eliminated so fast with it. So Tazdingo's job in the game is going to be to deal with the promotes. If one of those lanes pushes in too fast, someone has to relieve him at the top lane, and they can go for it. Oh, are talking about going for it! They're going for Arthas right now! And and they are getting him. They take down Arthas. Are they going to be able to get those gems as well? So Bolt was moving in and moved back just before the cooldowns were ready again. But the first blood in the game goes straight to Nihilo. They have one and Venom on the side of Sylvanas, of course. We are seeing, uh, yeah, we're seeing basically a reverberation build on uh, Muradin. Stork is, of course, using that. And also, in this case, we're having a second protective shield from Malfurion. That's always pretty cool to keep your heroes alive, especially when you're up against Burst. And it is Destruction on Talent level 4. So in this case, we're having Arthur's going for a very strong build here with Frostman. With this trade, he can dish out a lot of damage. It's definitely a great bruiser to have at the front line. And Snowstorm taken for Jaina. There's, of course, a lot of talents that he can take on Jaina on level 4. I mean, we're having Arcane Intellect, which is being used a whole lot. We're seeing also in Venom. <laughs> Look at that. Has Dingo actually getting away before he gets polymorphed there. Well done. Turned in so far. A lot of gems. And that's actually going to be the first Web Weavers. That's the first Web Weavers, and that's where Tazdingo with his Barb Shot needs to come to play. Oh, actually not! Oh, I thought they had enough! Where's the last turn in? Tassada has them. Tassada has the gems at the bot lane. I thought they had enough at the top, but they don't. If level 7 is there, there's the blue Web Weavers, and level 7 is going to be so crucial so that Sylvanas can rely on her unstable poison. Talking Sylvanas! Uh-oh! Uh-oh! And there's the perfectly timed Polymorph. Great kill against Tazdingo. Oh, that was a very good rotation that we saw here from uh, Rocket. And actually, it surprises me that Tazdingo got caught by that. He was a bit far out here, apparently trying to just get a few of those gems before moving back, and that turned out to be his demise. We have him with Unstable Poison on level 7. Yeah, not the best position for him to be in, but, well, a good rotation from Rocket, and that, of course, puts uh, relieves him a little bit of the pressure, but not too much because, well, Sylvanas is already back to business and is trying to push those lanes in. On level 7, we have Battle Momentum taken for Stork. The Dwarf is going to get a lot of cooldown reduction with that, especially if he goes for Avatar. We already talked about a potential Haymaker here. It's not very likely. Oh, good kill against Brightwing. Very good kill against Brightwing. Yeah, Alex the Frog was moving in with his Beetle here as well. But as mentioned before, it, there is a potential for Haymaker. It's not really the talent that you would normally take, but in this case, you could argue that they need the damage, and also with a double tank, there is the option for Muradin to just use that. So if you want to have the damage, if you really try to rely on that, you could go Haymaker. The cooldown reduction is going to help you either way with Avatar and Haymaker as well. Normally, Haymaker is not really a talent that you see too much in competitive play. Actually, to be quite frank with you, I can't remember the last time that I've seen it picked. Avatar is just so good, especially since you can combo it very well with your level 16 talent stone form on Muradin. But sometimes when you need the damage, it can be an interesting choice. At least if you are playing Team League, if you play Hero League. But let's see what exactly they're going to do. They have the option since they're going double tank, but it's a bit unlikely. Just to, uh, to mention it and uh, yeah, to have all our sons covered here. So level 7 now for both of the teams, Man, well, no big surprises here, rune tap taken on Arthur, sometimes you see even on level 7, the Frostborn talent taken, since it can be quite strong with that. Just look at Tazdingo up at the top lane, he can really get one of those spiders down super easily, thanks to the barb shot, so an easy defense for him up at the top. Needs to make sure that he's not taken out there, and before Polymorph hits, he gets away. Very well done, nice rotation from Rocket as well, but he was ready for it this time. And these web weavers so far haven't really done anything. I mean, as you can tell right now, we have at the bot lane the push nearly completed, thanks to Alex. At the top lane, there's also again Sylvanas helping out with that. Very well done. It's a slightly lean experience that we're just seeing right now for Team Nihilo. But this is of course only the first game from potentially or potentially three matches that we're going to see between uh, these two teams. I would love to see three games, to be honest with you. So far, it has been quite a lot of fun. We're having Alex down here. They are thinking about going for the camp. But level 10 is going to hit faster, even for Rocket. Look at that. Emerald wins. Yeah, they really expect a lot of jumps here. And it is Avatar, oh, of course. But do we see Web Blast? No, it's Locust Swamp. So very, very sustainable lineup that they are currently running here. Very, very sustainable lineup. That is going to be uh, pretty cool. We have Rolik and Stork already right there. There's Locust Swarm and Avatar being used tranquility, of course. 
it's really going to be super difficult to take these two tanks down. I mean, Locust Swarm and Avatar, if they go into your backline, even if you focus them with all that you've got, as long as the two protective shields are being in place, it's very, very tricky. All right, now we have Stork and Rolik moving in, Bakery as well, and yo, there we go for Arthur again with another root, but immediately there is the move by Brightwing. Moving them back with his Emerald Wind and making sure that there is nothing happening to them just yet. But also a lot of their rogue abilities are of course now out. Strafe hasn't been used yet, but Arthur's has used his ghouls and the army of the dead is already down. So that makes him, yeah, a lot less tanky. In this case, it's going to be much easier to take him down here. Stork with a missed Thunderbolt that he was throwing, or a Storm Bolt I should say. Uh, we're having Tazdingo still moving up to the top lane every now and then to just deep push. And they are both fighting for the... Uh oh oh! Star number one, star number two gets another one in. Silence as well! But they get get the kill against Shadow. They get it as the beetle moves in. And now they're going straight for Arthurs. So Vault with a good strafe but just not good enough. They're trying to turn it now around against Shadowmar who used Arkham Form as well. Not able to get the kill here. But they get the turn in and that will be the second one for them. So yeah, this is going to be super cool for Team Nihilum now. He pushing the lanes again, getting a few more gems. In experience, it's still they are still on high level with their opponent's team, and the bot lane was pushed hard by that camp that was taken earlier. Bribe on Bribe Wing, definitely helping out there. Moving, of course, in and taking that only Siege Giant camp on the map. The boss, very important probably for the later stages of the game. It's not called the throw pit for nothing up here, but in this case, they didn't even bother going for that straight away. We have now, again, Taz Dingo moving in into the mid lane, trying to just play a bit safe there while the rest of the team is deep pushing over here. They can't really push too much at the bot lane though, they really need to make sure that they move either at the top or in the mid lane. As you can see, the rotations from Rocket are pretty solid. They're moving from the mid lane, just punishing the threat straight to the top, and the only chance that Nihilum has to really get anything out of those web weavers is try to push in the mid or the bot right now. They didn't really get anything done with this. They got a bit of, the, uh, I would say the only thing that they really achieved was a bit of a deep push, but that's already about it. Storm being used by Shadowma to just zone them. They get, of course, the wall. You can't prevent that, but I highly doubt that they're going to be able to go for a fort. With Sylvanas, it's always great that he have the Black Arrow as a trait to disable the fort, so they might be able to get it after all, especially since Brightwing is not jumping in just yet, waiting that out. So it does look like they are trying to just let it go. I don't even know why Brightwing jumped in here, because, uh, like, obviously they were not in a position where they could defend it any longer. If they wanted to fight for it, they should have done so a lot faster than that. So Brightwing jumping down didn't really give them anything. If he stays at the top lane a bit longer, he could maybe soak 13, but he jumped in immediately. And now we have the 13 talent already done for Nihilo with overflowing light. We also have now Muradin going for the extra damage on the Thunderclap against single targets. Burning Rage taken. Also, in this case, as there is no jumper lineup, we have Muradin not going for Ice Block. Also not going for a potential shrink ray or anything like that. Instead we're having him go straight into life seed. The healing numbers for him are gonna be insane. And with overflowing light on Tyranda, they get even more out of that. And another attempt to turn in. They don't have the gems yet, but every single turned in gem is a gem that you cannot lose when you die. So that's exactly what they're trying to do. Playing it safe. Better safe than sorry. And trying to of course prevent their opponent from turning in, but Soccer completes his. They still have 42, so they could they could get the turn in. They could get it. And, well, there we have Rolik going in again in the mid lane with his Tyranda. Always ready to follow up a stun from Stork. But Sokke is moving back. He sees the uh, scouting drone, so he could not really wrap around that. Go for it. Ah, missed stun there. Uh-oh, Stork jumps away in the last second. Water Elemental has been baited out. Here come the Web Weavers for the blue team. Again, Sylvanas turned it up at the top. Tesdingo is back to business. Just look how Sylvanas just deals with all of those promoted minions the entire time. As long as there is no promoted catapult, it's going to be really easy for him to make sure that these lanes are not going to push in too hard. So Barb Shot plus Unstable Poison make it work. We have 13 talents now also ready for a rocket with an ice block, double ice block actually, and also the shrink ray here. They really want to make sure that once the tanks jump in, they can try and control them. Relentless on Arthur's is going to make him a bit more immune against those stuns, so it's going to be harder to lock him down, but that's not the primary target anyways. They want to go for the backline, they want to go for Sylvanas, they want to go for Vala, and they're trying to hit them already, trying to hit them hard. So far, no silence, no wailing arrow, but we have Muradin up at the front. He is still in cooldown on his avatar. I had to choose that a bit earlier, but of course there's also Locust Swarm that they can use. Still that level lead for Nihilum. A pretty intense game right now. Both of the teams know that the teamfight could end 
in either way. There it comes. The jump goes in. Silence hitting two, hitting three. Going straight for it. Also with the Starfall going for the zoning. But again, the move back by Team Rocket. They're trying to escape here. Shadow Ma is still in Archon. Gets stunned once. Is there follow-up? Yes, there is. And they kill Tassadar. They go straight for him. Tastingo moving back just a step to make sure that he's not going to focus, be focused down. And then we have now with Tranquility on Bakery. The entire team back to full HP. They got a kill out of this. And now they can maybe even go for boss. Of course, they didn't take down the walls yet. So uh, at this point, their opponents know exactly what they're doing. But you can't really contest that. The boss should give them level 16 now too. And it doesn't really look like Rocket is going to try and contest this. Instead, they're just moving into the middle of the lane and try to turn in. That will complete their own turn in. But that boss is definitely going to go ham. Boss on the top lane, and Rocket has to deal with that somehow. The 16 talent is going to hit any second. Those promotes, not going to do a thing. Not against Sylvanas, not against this build here in particular. So the promotes are the only two that are still alive, are being uh, followed over to the mid lane. And yep, there we go. 16 talent, double blood for blood, and look at that. Give him the axe. The executioner version of Muradin is being used here. A ton of damage. Damage Muradin. So not going for Haymaker as the rogue ability and plus stone form, but giving up stone form instead, going for Avatar and choosing the damage talent on 16 just to give them a bit more damage in those uh, fights. And to be honest, with all of the stuns that we are currently seeing with the roots, that makes a whole lot of sense, getting that in. If you don't really feel that you are dying in those battles, then why not go for the extra damage and try to just get a few more hits out there? You're gonna try to use those anyway, since you wanna uh, cap or proc your battle momentum as often as you can. Focused... Oh, I, I, love, I love hard and focused. I'm playing actually a lot of support these days, and hard and focused is absolutely amazing. It's a great talent to have. I always like joke that I want to have hard and focus on Rhaegar, but I think that would probably be a little bit too much. That would be quite fun. Hard and focus Rhaegar, best Rhaegar. Yeah, but on Malfurion, it's definitely an absolute pleasure. If you can stay in the back line, you're not getting jumped by your opponent. If you can go for enduring growth and hard and focus, you're getting your spells out like all the time. It's actually like crazy. The heals that you can put on the board are insane. And talking about heals in general, just to give you a bit of an idea of what we're seeing so far 26,000 on Bakery and his Malfurion are actually pretty damn solid, but it's nothing to write home about yet. But believe me, that guy is going to get his stuff out soon enough. So the one thing that Stork of course gave up when he went for Battle Momentum on level 4, which now is also quite visible, is that he doesn't have the double stun. He doesn't have the, the piercing bolt. That is one of the things that you sacrifice if you want to have that cooldown reduction, which of course also helps you a lot with your avatar. But it's probably a sacrifice that he made without any regrets here. That double storm bolt can be nice, but I don't really think that in this case they need it. They have so much stun and disable on the board that this is just adding a tiny bit to that setup. Turn in again, and that will release the Red Web Weavers, but as mentioned before, they have a really good setup to deal with that. Oh, here comes the Water Elemental, though. We already have Avatar being chosen, and Stalk is moving straight into the mid lane. Oh, of course, it's the Starfall and Army of the Dead has been used as well. The team is moving back. Stalk is trying to follow that up. Shadow Mao is already up at the top of the Tassel, are trying to get another hit in, and survived with that Frost Arrow, but he doesn't get too much done just yet. The Web Weavers are descending right now. Tess Dingo is at the front line. He's trying to get his Barb Chop in already to push them back here. Heroic abilities are all down on the side of Nihilo. We still have a couple of them up for their opponents, so Nihilo needs to be super careful here. They lost all of their heroics, and that puts them into a pretty difficult position right now, but they are moving in very, very cautiously, de-pushing that easy peasy thanks to Unstable Poison and those mini explosions, and they rotate to the top lane, which is the one that is threatened in a lot more. 16 versus 18. Here comes again Rocket, but they are missing Tassadar. They can't really fight for this just yet. But as you can see, with all of that, like look at the siege damage that we're seeing for Sylvanas. She's at 183,000. So that comes from that composition or that duo between Barb Shot and Unstable Poison, just in case that you were wondering earlier. It's a talent that becomes a lot more popular these days, and Sylvanas is going to de push this easily as well. But in the mid lane, that's where we suddenly have a bit of a fight going on, haven't we? Alex the Pro G up at the front, Stock, they're trying to zone for their fort and Taz Dingo already pushing the bot lane completely moving in here again trying to just like initiate once more three seconds on the arrow don't really want to use the arrow at the beginning of the fight you want to wait until your tanks jump in lock somebody down and if you then see a cluster then you can go for the wailing arrow and disable that but never lead with it if you use it too soon then your opponents just simply move away even if you hit a beautiful four or five man silence they're just going to move away from you they're going to wait it out and then they can go in again so you never 
really want to do that. At this point, there's also no real reason to fight for Nino. They're trying to control that. And that's something that Rocket knows. And Rocket is a little bit concerned about that. Rocket would love to fight. They would really love to have a fight right now where they can start to fight on even talents because they realize that the big risk for them is to just wait too long, their opponents hit 20, and can then simply use their next talent. Over here, Stork with Avatar. They're trying to go for the camp. They're going to get the camp here, but Stork needs to jump back. Alex the Pro G is also in a bit of trouble. Great silence. A five-man silence by Sylvanas. Very good arrow. Doesn't help them to go in, but it helps them a lot to get out alive. And they are still only one level away from level 20. There comes, of course, now Rocket. They want to be aggressive. I just talked about it. They want to be the ones that go straight for the fight right now. They'll go for pressure. They try to take down a few of the structures so that they can close the gap in experience so that they are not trailing too far behind in this now. And we are seeing them moving in again. And this is suddenly the time for Nihilum to go straight for it. Emerald win already being used. We have the ice block on Sylvanas. But no, Jaina actually. Jaina going down right into another blizzard hitting home. Song is about to die. Sport is trying to run away. But Shadowma up at the top could maybe shield him again. Can't in this case. We're having Tess Dingo trying to follow up against Sprightwing. But they got two kills in already. A five versus three boss at the top lane. They can turn in and get boss. Rolling is probably going to move over there. One of them will for sure. 83. That's what they have. And why did nobody move to boss? They are maybe a bit too late on that. Uh, it's going to be another second or two. And yeah, okay, they can trigger it. They can aggro the boss before the Web Weavers are moving in. So they are going to get that combo. And Web Weavers plus boss is just amazing. And just look at the experience. They're going to hit 20 with this too. They're going to hit 20 as well. And this is wow. This is punishment right now. This is punishment against Wilmet. The one thing that really works for them is that the top lane was so far pushed in that the Web Weaver is really far back and won't be really doing too much at the top lane. But they let Boss push top and they just move straight into the mid where the Web Weavers are still starting to do their thing. Getting kind of low already though. But this is of course now suddenly two keeps that are under pressure and that's exactly the situation that they are trying to create. Brightwing with Promote and that Siege Giant camp is trying to go for some counter pressure at the top lane. The boss is doing his thing, and over here, the first keep is of course going to fall. And now without Bright, Brightwing has to move in. Brightwing has to move in right now, and there's Sport Billy. Sport Billy is there, and here comes Stalk. Stalk at the front line, once again trying to go for a, a Storm Ball. Doesn't get it in, though, on the other hand, but the Howling Blast is hitting hard. Here comes the Silence once more, and Hazard's already low, gets shielded by Hazard on the last second. Shadow is trying to keep him alive. Stalk already on the move back with his Frozen Trampest. Disengaging here, nobody dying, at least not now, but they're stunned against Shadow Ma, and they get the kill in as well. He trailed behind too far, and now suddenly it's a 4 versus 5. The level 20 here is doing work, the double Storm Shield keeping them alive. They're going straight for the core, and this should be game. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be Nihilum with a first lead. They're losing Tarana, they lose a little bit more than that, but they still win the game. GG already called, and Nihilum with a first victory in the best of three series here at the DreamHack Valencia Qualifier. Nihilum in the lead. They take game number one, they win on two with the Spider Queen. And well, now we're going into game number two. And game number two is on Dragonshire. Of course, Nihilum would love to dominate this game now take the 2-0 and advance through the bracket. But Rocket, they are very experienced and they know exactly what they're doing here. And at this point, they had a very, very good draft. What they actually were able to do was put a lot of pressure on Nihilum. Nihilum suddenly ended up with a couple of choices that they probably didn't really want to make here. We have them with a Tyranda in the mix and they're currently, well, it's actually more a pick that they try to deny their opponent than actually pick themselves. They're running it with a Sylvanas, Jaina and also a Johanna at the front line because this time it was actually Rocket trying to put some pressure on the tanks. They already picked that composition that gave them so much trouble in the last game. They went for Muradin and also for Nubarak. So that front line of theirs is extremely heavy and behind that they have also of course, Kel'thas again, and what Rocket really likes to play, Izavala. So a very, very good draft for them. And we're going to find out if they can use that to now bring us into a third game, or if Nihilum, with their composition, is able to just like clench out a 2-0 victory in the series and then advance in the bracket to face the next team that's already waiting in the round of 8, which is Navi. So guys, next game coming up, Dragonshire between Rocket and Nihilum here at the DreamHack Valencia qualifier. All right, everybody, welcome to game number one, the DreamHack Qualifier for Valencia. We have still our second map here, Rocket going up against Nihilum, and Nihilum is in 1-0 lead after the victory on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Now we are on Dragonshire, and let's see 
how this game is going to end here. Starting to the right side, or starting to the left side actually, we are having Rocket here down one game in the best of three series with Shadowmar on Brightwing. Hazwops is playing Vala, Sir Vault on Kalthas, Sport Billy rocking the Anubarak, and Zocker is playing Muradin. So the double tank lineup this time for Team Rocket and to the right side of the map, it's Taz Dingo on Sylvanas, Rolling on Jaina, Bakery on Malfurion playing for the team today, Stog on Johanna and Tyrande played by Alex the Frog. In the mid lane, immediately some pressure play here from both of the players. Looking at the talents here, we have Scouting Drone taken on Brightwing over a potential bribe. It's always a pretty difficult choice to go for one of these two talents on the map. We're going to talk about that just a bit because we could see some action here in the mid lane. But we have also Stalk with Night Take Spawn on level 1. Immediately trying to get the wave together so that they can uh, burst that away as fast as they dare. Of course, the rotation on this map oftentimes with four players between bot and mid lane is very popular right now. Rolik is currently holding his own down to the bot lane with Jaina on the carpet. And we have some pretty interesting builds here already shaping up in the early game. And I'm kind of liking that. Up at the top though, as Dingo is trying to just push in with the rest of his team and using Sylvanas, just strong suit here. Already, oh good stun, look at that. Socket coming in from behind and unstoppable the trade on Johanna already used just to get out of the range of the stun that we're seeing from Nubarak. And <laughs> that was a fun one. <laughs> the stun and immediately condemn just one after another. The shrine's activating right now, but yeah, like super aggressive from both of the teams now. They are trying to get these shrines and that Dragonite as fast as they can, and we already have some pressure here at the top lane, where there's suddenly a move up against Taz. Dingo, he jumps away in the last second, gets to safety. Alex helps out with the heal, but we have all of a sudden Team Rocket with two shrines and they're trying to force to get the Dragonite. Bakery in the mid lane is dancing around the dwarf, trying to make sure that he can't get that Dragonite just yet. And the bot lane, we have the mages battling each other. It's fire versus ice. The song of ice and fire right there with Savold going up against Rolik. Jaina versus Kalthas and at the top lane. We have, for now, Nihilum claiming the spot. But we've been talking about talents a bit. Well, I guess we might not have the time to talk about them just yet because there's another rotation. Shadowmar moves in. Good stun! Good stun against Sprite Very low already. Three heroes against three. Usually the trial lane is at the bottom of the map, but right now they've been changing things up quite a bit. And well, Hayes level 4 already coming in for both of the teams. We're seeing both of the shines are all of a sudden taken by Nihilum. Nihilum and also Rocket on level 1 going for the scouting drone, giving up Bribe. And on this map in particular, Bribe is very strong, especially when you're trying to establish a good presence at the bot lane where you have access to two of the siege giant camps. Bribe is an exceptionally good talent there. But of course, with the scouting drone, you have a lot of vision. On on the map and I'm kind of liking that. For Vala we have also a great build here. With a multi-shot build you can oftentimes just skip the level 4 talent, not go for Arsenal, but go for either Manticore or Puncturing Arrow, which in this case is exactly what we're seeing here. A bit of a hybrid build. The really important part, if you go for the multi-shot build, is usually that you take composite arrows on level 1 and then on 13 you go straight into the frost shot so that you have the extra range and control in the game. Alex is trying to get another stun in here and he's aiming for, well, nothing just yet. Has all is moving in from behind. An attempt by Sport Billy gets something done. Oh, there comes the stun, but they miss, but oh, the owl kill against the Nubarak. First blood here for Nihilum, and that's of course a lot of pressure relief that they have at the top lane, and they cannot turn things around and go straight for those towers. Just look at Hazobs, he's trying, he's trying hard, he can't do anything about it. Once again, Knight takes form, taking hit points away from that minion wave, and they eliminate tower number one, and they go straight for tower number two, down at the bot lane. Jaina was pressured as well, but Rolik is still alive, needed too well up here, and all of a sudden the top lane is nearly completely destroyed. Job well done by Nihilum. Hazobs, of course, trying to hold his own with the build that he has already chosen here. We talked about it a bit, and we have on Anubarak, a build that also focuses a bit more on his Impale. We have that on level 1 for the range, and I guess the bet of Barbs on level 7 will follow. A bit more of an old school build. Rolik here in trouble. Nice dodge. Really well done. But he might not get away after all. The stun is hitting home. Here comes the Polymorph, but Jaina escaping in the last second. The top lane is a different matter though. Hazops is trying to get a bell. Sewald already moving in with the Balance Spheres, trying to go for the triple stun. Gets it off. Brightwing jumping in to help down to 
Then we have Blind by Stalk used against all three heroes. Again, they have the Shrine at the top lane. In the mid lane, Bakery versus Soccer. Murden still against Malfurion. The guys with the beard, who's going to take it? We have the bot lane on the other hand. Yeah, Sport Billy establishing himself a very good position against Jaina. But the party is happening all the way up at the Sun Shrine. Alex the Pro G gets... Uh, nearly gets away, but that rotation was a bit too much for him to handle. Murden coming in from the bot from the mid lane. Definitely too much. Both of the teams now on level 7. We have Barb Shot still taken together with Unstable Poison on this map on the side of Sylvanas. You of course give up a bit of the safety that the level 1 talent with the extra range gives you, but you have just so much wave clear with this build, it's insane. Stalk was trying to do what he can, but the dragon ends up in the hands of Hazorps. Rocket with very nice rotations there, especially that Murden move up to the top lane with a kill against Tyrand. That was, oh, of course, just so important for them to get that. Unstable user, uh, st sorry, Stalk using his unstoppable talent to just make sure that the Dragonite can't punt him away. It's actually real fun. You oftentimes forget that Johanna can do that. I, for, I played in a match today where I forgot that as well and uh, then I was very unhappy when uh, she did not get kicked away. Talking about Johanna in general, Knight takes pawn is something that we mentioned already earlier, but there's also Laws of Hopes now taken, and we have the Sins exposed on level 7, which, well, normally we see either Battle Momentum, there are a couple of other talents that you could take, the Speed on Condemn, for example, is one of the options that you have here. Oh, double stun against Bakery's Malfurion, at least they're trying to get that in. Level 10 is going to hit any second now for Team Rocket, and we've been talking about the compositions during the draft phase a bit, and so far it really looks like the analysis there was kind of spot on. The draft is looking very strong for Rocket right now. But of course Nihilum still has chances to take it. But we have a bit of map dominance by their opponents. They hit level 10 just a second later because they decided to go for one of the Siege Shine camps. Instead of getting that slightly faster heroic ability. And here we have them now with the Web Blast and also Avatar being used. No Locust Swarm as we saw from Nihilum in the last game when they were trying to play Muradin and Nuburak. But therefore they have of course the isolation of one of the heroes and that could be the healer that could be the damage that could be Johanna to just get that disabled out of the fray and we're having now for them also besides that strafe take it blink heal Phoenix of course I mean, it's a bit of a no-brainer and we're having for their opponents oh first of all we're having Hazops and a bit of trouble oh there he comes and they jump in with four heroes with five heroes and goodbye Taranda caught out of position Rolik is being sniped here as well Trying to get a counter kill with this water elemental, but Hazobs just moves back, and they of course have their healers around as well. Very well done here. So once again, we're seeing uh, more kills coming onto the board for Team Rocket. Three kills against one, and Nihilo is starting to struggle a bit against that. But up at the top lane, Testingo is trying to at least use that time window that he got to pressure the fort. He won't be able to do too much there since Hazops is already on the move. Not going to be able to get a kill there. He doesn't have enough mana either to get too many of his spells out. But there's already the Searing Arrow. If Sport Billy is able... Oh my god! He gets the stun! He gets the second! And that is too much. Very well done. Really well done. The Haunting Wave was already on this way and Sport Billy was timing that perfectly. Getting a perfect moment there with a good stun against Tazdingo that took him down. Tazdingo just not expecting that to happen. Very well played here. So yeah, good job on the side of Team uh, Rocket once again. And the Shrines are up in another second and that means that they could get another Dragonite. Stork is trying to move down to the bot lane to uh, uh, fight against Zocker. Uh, there's at least the root, but of course the Dwarf is always able to jump away and that's exactly what there is right now. Level 13. That's really what Rocket is waiting for right now. Get that 13, get that talent lead and use it to just move in. At the bot lane, Zocker is a bit exposed, but here comes the gank. They're moving in with a good strafe from Hazops. Oh, and immediately we have Web Blast used to down goes Jaina. The damage dealer is already out of the battle, out of the action. And we have them jumping Tazdingo now to take down the second damage dealer. That stun came just a bit too late to help out here. Level 13 versus level 12. The extra talent with a frost shot for Vala. We are seeing Flamethrower for Kel'thas. And of course also a spell shield. Plus a burning rage here for Sport Billy. Who apparently just says like, yeah, even without my Locust Swarm, I'm absolutely confident that I don't need my a spell shield against this setup. I'm going to be fine. We have on level 13 also Sticky Flare taken uh, for the extra slow on the movement speed, which is kind of cool if you don't need to go into a face shield. And so far they've been dominating these fights and doing really well. Doesn't really feel like they are lacking in the sustain with the double warrior lineup that they run at the front line. 
So they are dominating this game already. Very good draft for them. They analyzed what happened in the last game, in the first game, and they made it work. Getting uh, themselves not only Meridian, but also Nuborak, and this setup is just working out for them perfectly. Another kick here, this time against Alex. It's a five-man now on the side of Nihilum, and they are starting to fall behind a bit, not only because that Dragonite is going to do a whole lot of work, taking down a fort already, but let's just keep in mind that Brightwing is doing all of this at the top lane, trying to get even more experience for his team. And I mean, it kind of shows. If you look at the experience total that was taken by these heroes. We have Vala and also Kalthas taking uh, the prize so far. Vala, of course, especially at the early game with a solo lane here. But then we have Bright being really making sure that he gets even more experience in. The push at the bot lane is a strong one, but it's only going to be a trade. This is only going to be a trade for Fort RP against forces at the top lane. We see a very similar picture. I still believe that we are going to see Rocket move back because I don't think that they can outpush a Taranda. That's just not going to happen. That Black Arrow trade is too strong. There's already an Owl just showing that we have two of the heroes moving back with a B. And that, of course, triggers an immediate reaction out of Team Nihilum as well. They're moving back and they're starting to take camps now instead. Talking about heals, we have Bright being already out healing Malfurion heavily since Malfurion in most of these fights didn't really get anything done for, well, the obvious reasons. There were pretty fast snipes against the opponent, so there was not uh, too much to heal out there. We have level 16 now also ready for a rocket, and that's of course a big thorn in the side of Nihilum since they are up against the double blood for blood, stone form on Muradin. Very, very tanky. I mean, this is the tankiest Muradin build that you could possibly play. Playing with a, uh, a spell shield and then also store form plus Avatar. Very, very difficult to deal with. And besides that, we're having a double blood for blood, and let's not only talk about it. I mean, Ignite, by now, all of you know what Ignite means. That power spike on Kalthas is just so strong. When your flame strike also applies the living bomb to heroes that it hits, it is just absolutely insane, the spike in damage that you have. We can talk about that a little bit later. I mean, for now, we're having Kalthas as a solid 9,000 damage. Nothing, of course, compared to Vala, who has been able to dish out the damage thanks to the multi shot build throughout the entire game. But we're going to see how Kalthas is going to close that game. Gap. So currently Vala at twice the amount of hero damage. And for Nihilum it means that they have to try and soak lanes, not taking fights, not engaging into anything, delaying their opponents for as long as they can, trying to take camps, just put pressure on the lanes, move back, rotate over, take another lane, maybe go into the mid lane and drop a wall, go to the bot lane, de-push that, and just like have these things, keep those things going, trying to get into a position where they can finally fight on even talents with their opponents, and always trying to just outmaneuver Team Rocket, so they, they have a position where they always control at least one of the shrines. Brightwing is still at the bot lane. Shadowmar is still waiting here. More waves taken out, and they are closing in on the 16. But we have another move by Team Rocket going for another keep. Well, for the first keep, actually, and that, of course, triggers an immediate direction of Nihilo. They have to move in here, but it's just a bit of a burst move that they're seeing from uh, Rocket. They are taking down the wall, or at least they take down as much as they can, and then they move back. They force the opponents to to retreat, they force them off the map, and now they can just rotate down, take the shrine, move into the middle, and try and claim the Dragonite. 16 is there. Can they deny the Dragonite? That's the big question right now. Hazops is already waiting there, and they're trying to block, of course, the Owl as well. Hazops is gonna go for it. Uh, maybe it's too late. Nope, Stark was trying to use Blind, but it didn't really work anymore. So there's 16 versus 16. We have on 16 Blessed Hammer taken for Stork using that and now they're starting to move into the mid lane again and of course Rocket that is. Northern Exposure has been taken, we have the Shooting Star after Lunar Blaze was picked on level 7 and Blood for Blood here at least once for Sylvanas but this is one of those tricky situations that we've been talking about earlier already and now we uh, can just like watch how much uh, Kalthas is going to be able to get in. So far he's still a little bit low in the damage, he's in the back though starting to poke, hits Alex Gets that living bomb in as well. Is really starting to slowly and steadily close that gap between the damage on Silvana, on Vala, and himself. Getting another flame strike in, in just a second. Of course, the rest of the team at the front are just brawling, especially with the Nubarak and the Dragonite. They're moving for that. They are basically like three melee heroes right now, and Sirvald is just staying way out of. He's just getting his flame strikes in one after another. A little bit of poke here, a little bit of poke there. Just constant damage and pressure against the keep. 
and they are going to get this one for sure. So Wolf moves in, puts another Phoenix down, and that's all that he needs to do here. Another Flame Strike could be hitting as well. He comes to Strafe, and this is the battle that they were going for. Webblast already used, taking one of the heroes down immediately. It got attacked, and Jaina gets out alive. But here comes another Condemn. Maybe the Sun against Murder. Do they get the kill? It doesn't look like it. And Stalk falling really low. They try to heal him. He gets the Laws of Hope through once more, but it just was not enough any longer. Once again, the Flame Strike doing work, the Living Bomb hitting again, and Vala with 33,000, but Kelthas already starting to catch up here. 24,000 for him, doubling, doubling the damage done, more than doubling actually, the damage that he has done so far. So right now we have level 19 versus level 16, 8 kills against 1. And if this continues this way, if, uh, if Nihilum doesn't get a good fight in, then Rocket will tie the series up and force a third game out of their opponents. And that looks... this is actually like exactly what it looks like right now. But the level 20 talent is just gonna give such a massive power spike to Rocket that they should be able to easily drop another, another keep and maybe even do more than that. Are they going to go in or are they uh, going to wait for the next Dragonite to dominate that? They have a three level advantage and they have a double hardened shield. That makes them so unbelievably tanky and also of course the flexibility, the movements that we have now on the side of Vala and also Kalthas with the Bolt of the Storm. Brightwing with a double polymorph thanks to Rewind. It's also a very good, good for him to have that. And Sir Vault with another Phoenix. A 40 second cooldown on the Phoenix. That heroic ability is just such so ridiculously strong. It's amazing. You can see how Kelthas is now really starting to close that gap. Oh, but maybe a snipe! They're trying to get it, but again, not happening. Once more, that's the web blast. They're trying to lock that down. Strafe has been used by Wala once more. And another attempt to just zone them with at least the staff or the stuns against Zocker. But even with the Rangers mark, they're not getting that kill in. Muradin with this build is just nearly unkillable. That spell shield alone together with Stoneform. They're moving in again, but look at that flame strike. Boom, hitting again. And now it's 39,000 damage on Kalthas against 41,000. He nearly surpasses Vala in damage already. And that 16 talent is, of course, the reason why. But at least there's one temple or one shrine now taken by Team Nihilum. Keep in mind that they are three levels behind though, right? Even if they hit the next level, they will still be two levels away from that final talent that you try to get in this game. And here comes Kel'Thas once more. And that, oh, that Phoenix, the flame strike, the damage. And by now he is the best damage dealer in the game. He is at 44,000 already, surpassing even Vala. Great game. And they are trying to move in once again. Well, what can they actually do here? Stalk is getting focused. And Johanna trying to keep alive. Going, of course, for that extra shield thanks to his trade. Here comes the Web Blast again. The kill against Destingo is already starting a chain. Another Web Blast or another flame, uh, flame Strike is hitting. Here comes the Water Elemental to slow the Onslaught down. But, of course, it is just going to delay the inevitable. Stalk is trying to rush to the top lane to catch the Shrine. But you can already tell that he's not going to be there in time. Hazorbs just moves in and Sokka says like, all right, this Dragonite, it's going to be mine. And even that owl doesn't really hit. Yep, Alex was trying, but he's a bit too late and he might actually pay with his life right now. Yeah, they're trying to stun him out, but they don't get him here. So sprint taken on 13, saving Taranda for now, but not going to save the game. The Starfall here, not going to do too much either. They're trying, they're doing whatever they can, A for effort, but the result of this game is undeniably going to be Team Rocket tying the series up with a 1-1 and forcing game number 3. Sport Billy nearly going down there in a bit of trouble, but gets a Burrow Strike away. Well, now they're actually starting to take some damage here, but once again, that Web Blast just preventing the worst 50% on the core already. The Dragonite just going for the right click, going ham, and he is going to take that. Congratulations to Team Rocket taking the game and forcing Game 3 in the best of three series here at the DreamHack Valencia Qualifier. And the series is tight. There's just nothing better than when you have a best of three series that goes to the last map. And in this case now Rocket winning game number two and we're gonna go straight into game number three. Blackheart's Bay is the map and we have an Illidan composition that is being played by Nihilum now. So Nihilum is trying to play this with Illidan. They have an Anubarak at the front line and they were also able to pick up a Brightwing here in this case. Whereas for their opponents what we're currently seeing here is well not only Johanna but we also have a very very aggressive lineup when it comes to damage 
average output. We have for them uh, Sylvanas, we have Kalthas, and we also see in the lineup Vala together with an Uther here. So this is going to be a pretty interesting one. We also have the bird back, by the way, so there's chicken on the menu today. We have Falstead played by Taz Dingo on the side of Nihilo, which is also going to be quite a lot of fun. The last game in the series here, the Dream Act Valencia qualifier, guys. So get ready for this one. Who's going to advance to face Navi in the round of eight? Is it going to be Hinidum or is it going to be Rocket? We're going to find out now. Game on! Game number three, we have Nihilum versus Rocket. This is going to be the last map between them. We are in the round of 16 of the DreamHack Valencia qualifier and which team is going to advance to face Na'Vi in the next round. To the left side of the map in this third map of the best of three series on Blackheart's Bay, we have Nihilum with Rolik on Jaina, Taz Dingo on Falstad, Stork on Anubarak, Illidan played by Alex the Frog and Brightwing played by Bakery playing here for Nihilum today. To the right side of the map, it is of course Rocket with the Hazobs playing Sylvana, Shadowma on Vala. We have Spotbill on Uthas, Zocker on Johanna, and Sir Vault on Kelthas. The last two games, I mean, we had some pretty sick games there, but then in the end, now we are going to see who will advance. First game ended, of course, on Tomb of the Spider Queen in favor of Nihilum. Right now, they're playing pretty passive. If you're up against the bird, you usually don't go for the Watchtower fight, since the bird could just simply fly in, cap that vision early, and then you can just like see where your opponent is going to come from and you can be a bit cautious with that. So right now, two heroes, three heroes actually at the bot lane. So they're going to try and snipe Illidan and then they are going straight for that chest over here. We have one hero in the mid, one hero at the top. That's something that Nihilum definitely has to communicate right now. And they're going for the burst on the first wave here. Ah, Alex gets away, he sees what's coming. And it's going to be five coins versus five coins, but that extra experience up there is already nice. And down here, Zocker, of course, can't do anything against that. We're already seeing Rolik and Stork coming in, Zocker moving back. And at uh, this time, the job of Zocker and also of Kalthas at the top lane is simply to soak. Don't do anything. Don't move uh, far too far out. Don't try to be a hero. Just play cool and calm. Get the experience and just make sure that your opponent can't kill you. That's your only job. That's all that you have to do. Don't dare to just make a mistake and get killed because you're going to lose too much experience. The teams right now, level 1, we're having power throw taken, of course, for false dead. And we have the Q build on Vala. Vala is going for the arrow build here completely. Shadowmai is using that. Rocking that Hearthstone card, by the way, as you can see. The two of the Hearthstone stone cards are already being used here. Um, yep, and well, down here to the lane, we have Bakeritas, Dingo, and Rolik still in uh, position. They are also trying, of course, to counter now the tri lane of their opponent. Shadowma gets a couple of really good arrows in, but has Dingo is already there with the lightning as well. At the top lane, we're having uh, Illidan right now, so it was a bit of a rotation, rocking that Shando skin here as well on the carpet. So Vault and also Zocker are trying to go for the counter play, but Illidan is already there. Gets blinded and needs to move back. That's, of course, one of the cool things about Johanna that you can uh, bring to the table when you're facing an Illidan, that you don't only have Condemn to suck him in, but that you also have then Blind, which is very useful against them. Both of the teams now in level 4, and there's after Siphoning Arrow with the additional Health Regeneration, or like Health Leech, we have Puncturing Arrow taken. It is Night Takes Pawn and Laws of Hope, no surprises here, and even with the Netherwind on level 4, it's not really a big surprise. Most players on Kalthas are currently using that tunnel on level 4, and don't go for Gathering Power, since Kalthas just doesn't really benefit from it as much as other heroes do, especially since he doesn't really have an escape, and Netherwind is quite amazing. We have Gathering Power taken, on the other hand, from the side of Falstead. And Falstead is a very interesting hero these days, because most of the players that you see will go for the right-click build, the order attack build, on Falstead, which means that you take Secret Weapon on level 7 instead of going for Boomerang. We have with Gathering Power both options right now, but the interesting part is that the build still differs a bit. You, even if you go for the order attack, you will still see a lot of players go on level 4 for Gathering Power, simply because they want to use that also with level 16 overdrive for their rogue ability. On level 20 they take Nexus Frenzy, but that, uh, that well, Hinterland Blast is just strong enough for them to want to have the extra burst. If you see on the other hand the hero played by let's say somebody like Hazorbs, he will on level 4 for Go Gathering Power and instead go straight for Vampiric Assault, which can actually make a whole lot of sense, especially in the late game if it gets to that. So yeah, there's two different ways of how you can play 
the auto attack build. You can play either a bit of a hybrid, which we could see in this case, depending on what testing or picks on level 7, or you will just instead see them go into a straight auto attack build where it's switching a few of the talents out. Good kill against Brightwing at the top. Stalk just a bit too short. Is he gonna go for that stun? And yes, can he kill someone? Oh my god, you got to be joking! So Vault gets away and I cannot believe that he survived. And a double kill at the bot lane is now putting Team Nihilo even farther behind. They lose experience on the lane. Hazops is still alive. Brightwing died up at the top. And we had Jaina and Falstead die to the bot lane. Falstead, of course, can fly in to make sure that they don't do too much of damage. But this is already a big, big blow. The wall is gone. Here comes the repeating arrow on level 7. We have on level 1 with the win taken by Sylvanas here. And this is not a good start into the game for Team Nihilum. Not at all. They are behind in experience. We have the full range chance taken on the side of Nuburak. Not going for that beetle build, by the way. So we are seeing extended spikes under King and bed of barbs taken. The three talents for Nuburak. It is an alternative build. It's a very strong one at that. They have to bank their hopes on Illidan, especially in the late game. Alex waiting until the living bomb explodes so that none of the buildings take damage. Cannonballs, of course, now also firing against Nihilo. Well, they got a lot of coins and were able to turn them in, so that's not a surprise. We're having Brightwing with Bright. We already saw that earlier. And level 7 gave us secret weapon. So it is that, that hybrid build that we see on Tazdingo. Going for auto attack. He will pick Giant Killer on level 13. But could still go for overdrive for level 16 to just have more burst on that heroic ability of his. So currently with this, we're having a very, very interesting setup for the rest of this game. Frostbitten taken after Arcane Intellect, a lingering chill. No deep chill here, but the lingering chill on the Jane has level 1 talent for him. And level 10 is already there. And just look at the leading experience that we are seeing for Team Rocket. They are looking very, very strong right now in this third map. And they have also their rogue abilities. And that will, of course, allow them to put even more pressure on the lane. They might even be able to just go up to the top and push in that four together with the rest of the team. Bakery! Uh-oh! Yeah, here comes the heroic from Zocker. Condemn being used. Bakery stands no chance. Alex is going for the camp and he is going to complete. It. Uh, oblivious, that's what Rocket is right now. They don't know that this has just taken a few meters away from their position, or they would have gone straight for it, stolen it away, maybe even gotten a kill against Illidan. We have still the Phoenix being used over there, and they go for early boss. They go for a super early boss here, six minutes in, they're just saying, we have 11, they don't even have 10. We can easily take the boss, there's nothing that they can do. If you are ahead, then run with it and try to just increase the lead that you have. That is what uh, what Rocket, aka Wellman, is currently doing here, and they are doing a very, very good job. Being the solo tank of the team, Stalk is of course going for Locust Swarm. Would also not be surprised to see him go on level 13 for shield, going for the spell shield here, instead of using his Burning Rage, which he oftentimes takes. Tazdingo is there, they have the 10, can they do something with that? That's the big question, though moving up against that boss is already a bit of a tricky move. They have Illidan at least turning the coins in so that they get a few of the structures in the mid lane. As you can see here, it is going to drop the fort, so that's already a slight victory. Oh, Stark moves in, but he doesn't stun anything and he gets bursted right away! Here comes in the back line uh, the Stray, thanks to Mala, even getting the Divine Shield in to help him out with that. One hero down, the rest of them are just trying to retreat here. So Vault is already on the move. Can he get a gravity lapse? Oh, that's the in the last second. Wow, moving away here, getting away. That boss is still alive and actually, talking about it, that fort in the mid lane did survive. It was a bit too early to call that. Apparently the entire wall was intact when the barrage started. So that is not looking too good for Nihilum. We have right now yeah, we have Rocket in a very solid position here. Looking at the damage, to give you a bit of an idea what's happening here, Sylvanas is taking the lead in DPS against Heroes. Vala, on the other hand, with 7,000, still in a pretty solid position. Illidan, of course, is going to get a bit stronger in the later stage of the game, and Illidan really has to make this. Illidan has to make the plays later to get them into a good spot here. On this map in particular, you can, of course, always try to just, like, move around your opponent, just go for the objectives, and try to turn in coins, but it's very difficult if you lose the map control. That's a really good chest spawn on the other hand for Nihilo since they were already in position to get that. They get an entire chest out of this. This could have been much worse. If that 13 talent would have just hit a little bit faster for their opponent and they just moved and took two chests, that would have been a nightmare. But right now, it's still a level advantage that they are running with. We have for Johanna also spell shield taken. There's flamethrower for Kalthas. Surprise, surprise. And uh-oh, Tazdingo moves away. 
Oh, and dies. Well, it's trade in fort, so they get the fort in the mid lane. A bit of a poke, but the bot lane is now being pushed now too, and they have to just move back with this. Bakery, of course, can use his face shield there, but right now Nihilum is in trouble, and in a lot. Vala hasn't made a choice yet. Spell shield, what is it, is it gonna be? Could go for spell shield here. Oh, and so far, there it is, Frost Shot. Frost Shot taken instead, just saying, all right, listen up, I'm going to take Frost Shot just for the extra control during the fights. Here comes also, as mentioned, Giant Killer. I guess, like, the longer the game goes, the better the position of Nihilum should be, because especially the level 20 is going to be absolutely amazing. When it comes to uh, Rocket, 20 is going to give them a lot of mobility. They will have a lot of Ball of the Storms. We could see the Deafening Blast on Sylvanas, which is, of course, great against Illidan. But we have so much damage with Nexus Frenzy, a Blink on Sylvanas. There's a lot that they could do. But for now, it looks like we might not even get to level 20. The Snipe against the Nuborak. Here comes Illidan. Can Illidan maybe turn this around? Test Dingo. No, Illidan dies as well. Just look at all of the coins. They lost all of their coins. They lost a ton. It's 23 coins now on the side of Rocket. They move in, they turn that in, they just like run with the advantage that they have. Great fights by Rocket so far, and Nihilum is currently falling apart. Nihilum is trying to somehow stay in that game, get to a position where they can maybe start and turn things around. It did definitely not help that Stott did not pick his talent on level 13. He could have gone for a spell shield here. It might have kept him alive long enough so that he could have gotten healed and that he might have been able to use his Locust Swarm to just get a bit more sustain here. He still didn't pick the 13 talent. And I don't really know why. For me, this is like looking at the heroes that we're having on the opponent's side. This looks a bit like a no-brainer, right? You are the solo tank of your team. You want to have a bit more sustain. And he still didn't pick a spell shield. They're trying to go for soccer, but try and take down Johanna with only like two or three heroes. That's never going to happen. There. Burning Rage! All right, I mean, he might be raging a little bit, but if you look at that team with Illidan, with also... I mean, Jaina and Falsa behind her, do you really need that extra damage that you get with Burning Rage? I personally don't think so. And Kel'Thuz is just a nightmare if you look at that Flame Strike later on. Tazdingo trying to escape, Brightwing with attempted save! Oh, it's not enough, and Brightwing is gonna die now too, isn't he? Bakery eats the damage, and this could be it, guys. This is this is a nightmare. For Nihilum, this is a disaster. For Rocket, this is the dream. They move in just easily. They lost the first map of two of the Spider Queen, and they got really destroyed over there. But then they take it on the second map on Dragonshire, and now on the third one, they are just in an amazing position. We have them on level 16, 17 against 14 now, with Blood for Blood, Benediction, Cold Embrace. Of course, what's also amazing for especially Rocket is that Uther now on level 13 with the Polymorph and all those fights can go straight for a quick, not Polymorph, but of course a Shrink Ray, for quick Shrink on Illidan, and that is just so much control against Illidan, it is absolutely amazing for them. They really can just lock him down six days to Sunday. Stalk over here, oh god, wow, oh, oh my god, I, I can't even look. Like, I can't even look, this is brutal. This is brutal, they're getting slapped around the map right now. They're like the punching bag of, they're the punching bag of Rocket. Rocket is using the Helium as a punching bag. They slap them from the right to the left, the left to the right. It's like watching one of those Asterix and Obelix movies when Obelix is going straight for the Romans and just slaps them around. That's exactly what that is right now. We have 11 kills against zero, and there's only one keep that is still alive, and I don't even want to call that alive because, like, that is like. It, I mean, you cough at that keep and it's down, right? So, this is. This is horrible. The boss is going to finish the keep, and I guess Rocket is going to try and finish the game right now. 16 to 16. This is the last chance that they have. The last chance of Team Nihilum to make a stand. If they can win a big fight and with even talents, they might be able to make... Oh my god, the root against Stalk. you got to be joking. Oh, that, this is like... This is really like... I mean, at this point... Adding insult to injury, Stalk gets rooted, they are going drive for kill, nice, that was a good one, that was a really good one, but there's the Divine Shield, they're getting maybe a kill against Uther, not just yet, Illidan, 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 Stalk gets Shrink Ray as well, Illidan jumping in, Sokka is down, Sokka is down, and they kill Shadowmar, they have two kills, maybe they get the momentum, Illidan, where's Illidan, they, Illidan is in the back, he can't follow, he has not enough hit points, and Stalk, oh, Stalk died too, oh, they got three kills though, they got three kills, Maybe, maybe they can make something happen from here, but they have not a single 
keep left. Not one. They cannot afford to turn in. Zero coins turned in from 18. It's an expensive turn in that we're seeing for Rocket. A very expensive one. And Rocket will have level 20 soon enough and therefore lead in talents that they could use to win another fight and either go core or turn in. But right now, Rolik and his boys, they are trying to go for the turn in here and they have 12 coins. That's an entire turn in that they get that will take down the fort at the bot lane. Close experience a little bit. Think, the, the one thing to think about here is really that yes there is a huge gap in experience but at least there are a lot of structures on the map and turn-ins are still extremely cheap so if they take down the structures of their opponent they will be able to to close that gap in experience just a bit faster. But of course, they need to make another play like the one they just made. They need to no win another team fight and need to do that before they hit level 20 or they will not have a chance to stay in a fight without having the level 20 talent against them. You could try and fight that and maybe you'll get lucky enough with a snipe at the beginning of the map uh, of the match to just win that as well. But then again, if your opponent runs a Divine Shield, it's very, very unlikely. You have to hope for Uther to make a mistake, and so far, I have to say that they didn't really make, uh, make a lot. Sport Billy is moving uh, back there. They have a couple of coins. It's eight coins in total, and they're trying to set another trap. They're trying to set a trap here. Falstad is starting to fly in, moves to the point, and, well, now, of course, they're visible on the map, too. And are they going to go for an attempt to go core? I do not think so, but they will threaten it. And then threatening it is all that they have to do. Well, this is going to be another wall, and that gap in experience, I've been talking about it, it is going to close. It is going to close. There comes the move, and, well, they need to move back. What is... What is... They're trying to outpush them. They're actually trying to outpush them. Oh my god, really? Do they have more damage with the camps that they are trying to go for? I don't think so. I really don't think so. The core is already down to 70%. Bakery was just like trying to pull him off them a little bit. There's just no way. No, that was a desperate move and it was too desperate. This is game, ladies and gentlemen. GG and Team Rocket with a 2-1 takes down a Helium and advances to the next round of the DreamHack Valencia qualifier to face Navi. Oh boy, that finish! Nihilum trying to go for a bit of a base race, but their opponents are just a tiny bit faster. That didn't really work out. And I mean, you might have seen that in the video as well, but actually, there was a bit of a missed call. I talked to the players afterwards as well. And what really happened there is that apparently someone on the side of Nihilum misunderstood what was going on there. They were trying to go for the base raid, but one of the calls in voice apparently was misunderstood. And two of the heroes TP'd back, whereas the rest was trying to push in. So there was a lot of damage missing. Illidan just moved back and tried to defend the core, died instantly. Brightwing did the same thing. That's two heroes that they were missing when they were trying to go for the core. And of course another big problem that happened with that is that Team Rocket with picking up these two kills suddenly ended up being level 20 which of course gave them a lot more stat damage as well against the core of Nihilum and also Vala turned 20 and therefore got her, yeah, well, her extra ability which in this case is Nexus Frenzy and puts out a lot more damage. So if that didn't happen, I actually think maybe Nihilum would have been able to take down the core faster after all because they had a very, very aggressive lineup when it came to pushing power. The game before, of course, was dominated by their opponents. I mean, Rocket did so well in this game. They played an incredible series here and all the fights that they took just ended in their favor. So this was really well done. It was a bit of a Hail Mary move that we saw there by Nihilum, but it could have actually worked out if not for that misunderstanding that apparently happened there in voice. As it is, a great series between the two teams and of course Rocket advancing now to face Navi in the next round. They played a great game here, a great best of three and of course they are now up against a very, very strong opponent. So we're going to see a super cool game coming up next in the round of eight. But this game already was quite a lot of fun to cast at least. I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching as well. If you did, give the video a thumbs up on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to Color TV yet, hit that sub button. And if you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section. I'm going to answer if I can. Thank you very much for watching today, guys. See you soon with more Heroes of the Storm here on Color TV. Bye-bye.